centers which are in general uh, good structured uh, facilities uh, managing data properly uh, is this part here. So there is a high fitness of use of the data uh, archived and supplied to the community. And then there is this uh, area here where data are mostly unmanaged, but uh, at least uh, they are going into some repository. And then comes here the long tail of uh, data. Uh, that's what we call the long tail of data, which are completely unmanaged data. So in the gray zone, uh, uh, having life on an individual storage device of a, of a scientist or forgotten on some storage devices and so on and so on. So uh, to mobilize such data and also to improve uh, the data that we already have managed in a proper way, uh, this concept is for. Um, so what are the prerequisites? Uh, for what are the uh, requirements to, to make this really happen? So certainly we need uh, licenses uh, on our data, so like uh, Creative Commons. Uh, we need to compensate for the costs. Uh, that is, I think, a very important aspect. Uh, I was last year. I was in Boulder uh, talking to people from NGTC. So Noah is one of the. Uh, you can use this one. Yeah, Noah is uh, one of the. Yeah, Noah is one of the uh, institutions that is uh, uh, having fixed yeah. uh, money for. Uh, certain services, but they are not an open data submission platform or something like that. That means if uh, an individual scientist comes up here and uh, tries to uh, submit data to, uh, to uh, let's say, the NGDC, uh, there is a problem immediately because uh, it is not uh, the costs are not compensated for. So uh, this is something that we need to have in mind here. Uh, and it's also something, I know that NOAA is not uh, eligible to funding from NSF, but uh, many data centers are eligible to additional funding, so getting involved in science projects uh, is, uh, I think, is, is necessary. But that also meets uh, what Sandy was talking about, engagement in science projects and with funders and so on. Uh, that is the source of funding, uh, the possible source of funding. If you are in a science project and you get a share there in the funding and uh, trying to make good data management, uh, then uh, your cost might be compensated somehow. Um, and persistent identification, I think, is also something necessary. We have persistent identifiers on data sets, uh, many of them. So let's say, for example, in the biodiversity area, there is a life science identifier. Um, we have many more. And DOIs, uh, that is um, uh, brought up by DataSite, this uh, persistent identifier used also in the publishing world. Um, and I think that is the one uh, that we should head for. But uh, certainly, this is not the only one. The nice uh, thing about uh, DOIs is it's resolvable. That means um, if you're registering your data sets uh, at this place, um, then there's also a resolver for it. For it. Uh, so uh, we have a liaison with uh, data site, uh, WDS. So I think it's a partnership or an associated member or a partnership, I think. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Uh, so we're, we're promoting this. Uh, and on this way, I would, I would like to recommend also for you considering using DOIs for, uh, for your data sets. Certainly there are other issues like um, the granularity of the data sets. I know there are many data centers uh, so far, and that is really a big problem. Uh, they have uh, what uh, once uh, Peter Fox was uh, called the big iron. That means they're pumping in their data into one uh, relational database, and uh, they do not care about granularities of data sets and citable entities and all this. Uh, but I think uh, this is also addressed in the context of the metadata catalog, uh, where we try to set out some at least recommendations of uh, what the reasonable uh, granularity of a data set could be. 
but this is linked. So when you are registering your data sets, uh, then you also need to have a reasonable, citable enti uh, entity uh, that you can register. Um, quality. Well, I need not to call about, uh, uh, talk about quality. You were uh, um, given the accredit you were accredited as, as a member because you have a certain quality. Uh, efficiency. I would like to stress this again. Uh, because also Sandy stressed this in her uh, talk. Uh, so that means metadata, data interoperability, standards, machine-readable data. Um, so this is what, what you can see here with, uh, with ordinary repositories. Uh, I know in some fields like social sciences there is no real other way to do this, but in the natural sciences there are a lot better ways of uh, archiving data. Uh, in a more consistent way, so it is really, uh, it can be integrated uh, on a larger scale. So this does not only address uh, the way how NetCDF files are uh, structured and uh, uh, can be used, but uh, it, is, it goes deeper even. So that means uh, we, we need to see that uh, we need also interoperability standards, uh, not only on metadata, but also on data. Uh, which are <coughs> at present more or less completely missing. Uh, so this is what we, in general, what we have. Um, so these may be citable entities here, and this is what we envision also for the data publication concept. So this is what we call fitness of use. Um, it is, um, yeah, it is remarkable that. Um, within the OECD principles and guidelines for access to research data, uh, the efficiency or fitness of use was uh, already mentioned uh, as one of the principles in 2007. So that's, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, further, trusted certified data archives. That's what we have. Uh, that's our WDS. So we are one of the, uh, yeah, Consorts here, and I think that is in the first front of, uh, of uh, trying to implement this data publishing concept. Um, another point is citability. Um, that is also something that, uh, when you see this uh, on a timeline, uh, causes problems. So scientists, they are keen on on publishing their articles, they are not keen on publishing their data. And uh, what happens in general is that uh, the article is published and then they throw maybe some data behind it and say, okay, you can have my data, or they put a supplementary materials in the context of the publication of the article, uh, which means the data are not really citable, they are not citable entities. And uh, also, they are not referred to uh, in the reference list of the article. So they do not show up there saying, yeah, this is the site of the entity of, of the data. Uh, so this is really, this is reality now, but uh, this needs to be changed. Um, um, this is a slightly better situation. So seeing that the data are produced before you can produce an article, uh, but it's not uh, the ultimate solution, so what we would like to have is this. The data are published before the article, um, and not only the part that is, uh, that is directly related to an article, but uh, the complete data set. Uh, you also know, um, I know that I'm also a scientist, that uh, you can filter your data, and that is done frequently. So, you're just publishing what you think is valid or what you think is uh, promising some good results. And so uh, much of the information that is actually uh, needed uh, on a larger scale or for other purposes you know, is missing. Um, I wouldn't say it is uh, some kind of uh, manipulating science, but uh, I think in some areas uh, there is, this is a purpose. So, Filtering data is not really good. 
Okay. Um, that there is an impact on the, uh, with data bombing. It's, it's a real incentive for scientists. Uh, uh, we can see that. Um, is shown here by these um, uh, investigations by John Sears. He was a former publisher from AGU. Uh, he did uh, here the uh, diagram uh, using data from Pangea. This is my data center. Um, and we are publishing data since a long time. So you can see uh, those um, all articles and those with data, the red the dots here. So it is an uh, increased um, rate of citations uh, that you can observe here. Uh, and Heather people were um, did the same with class uh, data. Uh, and there, the increase in citations of the article, uh, I must uh, note here, of the articles, it has increased by 69%. So um, there is an impact, uh, very clear. So this is what we envision here. So we, we try to work closer together with uh, with the publishing industry, uh, with publishers in general, um, trying to build up linkages, uh, linking workflows, and trying to uh, build common services. Mustafa, you're looking at me because of the time. It's okay. It's okay. No? It's okay. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Um, so the workflow uh, uh, for publishing a data set could be like that. I know in the back you cannot read it. Uh, so it it's only involves the data center and, and the scientists finding their data to the data center. But you could also imagine something that is um, combining the publication of an article and the publication of the data. So trying also to get maybe um, a common review on data and articles. Um, we are doing this uh, from Pangea here. This is an example of our metadata on a splash page on, on the, uh, of the data set. And this is how it shows up on Science Direct. Um, I mean, this is a splash page for the article, and here are the data. They are dyna dynamically in included uh, on this uh, splash page. This is part of uh, what uh, SVA calls the article of the future concept. So seeing that uh, the bits and pieces of uh, scientific information is distributed somehow, uh, we could try from our side, from the data centers, we could try to bring in our piece here. So and because uh, the articles are a very prominent place for scientists, uh, uh, so the, the Authors, they would like to see this, but also seeing the citation rates, uh, also readers, uh, they like to see this. Uh, this is kind of, uh, of uh, yeah, complex information where we could supply one piece for our data. Uh, this is another example from Scopus, so who doesn't only work with uh, SEPA. And this is what we envision from the, uh, from, uh, from the WDS. So having here in between our data centers and catalogs, journals, and so on, having their registries and publishing services. So in particular, linking service uh, that we by now we call cross data. So similar to cross ref, uh, trying to build a link between data and science articles. Uh, so these are the other building blocks here. The Consortium behind this is, uh, I, I would say, uh, has some weight. So we have here F.K. Smith, for example, from yeah, <laughs> she looks, uh, from SDM. This is the umbrella organization of uh, of the publishers, but many of the those here, data side, Thomson Reuters, uh, many data centers are are in the boat. Uh, so. It is very likely that we might uh, have some impact with uh, trying to come up with these uh, linking services and with the publishing concept as, uh, as a whole. So here I would like to end. Yeah, if there are questions.